she get organized from a position that's already biased towards flexion, which is the bottom position of our Olympic lifts, right? Which is why we want you to be able to top down setup and bottom up setup. So how can she go from this position to the best shape language available to her? So what's that look like? Get your best shape position, right? Perfect. And what we're looking at then, stand back up, is that in yoga, we do a lot of folding, hinging. We also round and then come back up into that hinge and understand that you should be able to hinge clearly. And then as soon as I start putting these flexion loads, what's the best shape available to me from there? That's all we're doing is doing that one. Does that make sense? Trying to continue to develop this language. Let's go ahead and just step it out as far as you can. In fact, no, screw you guys. Let's go and do this. Let's take your shoes off and grab yourself a medicine ball. I want to get some ankles prepped. What we're looking for is can I maintain this ankle in the middle of the foot, right? We're trying to prime that and put awareness in between ball, foot, and heel. And then from this position now, instead of just managing your body, you gotta manage this load. So stay on your left foot, arch engage, no wobbles. Don't be lifting up your toes or doing crazy stuff, keeping that ankle in the middle of the foot. Notice that that is not a great position. This is too compensated. What I wanna do is put that, keep that ankle stable working that foot, that foot's gonna have to be active, using my toes to grip when I need, but trying to stay balanced. Now, long global lever opening through this anterior line, reach back, don't hinge back. So feel what that's like. See how far you get that foot right off the ground, one centimeter from the ground, how far can you go? Can you find your butt engaged? Keeping that foot centered, feeling. Take some big breaths there for me. Good, now kick that thing back into a hinge. How far can you go? Can you get that foot really close to the ground in the back? Turn it close to the ground in the back. How low, how far, maintain the integrity of your foot. So knee-foot relationships only hold true in a very few specific situations. The rest of the time, we should be looking at the foot, and what's going on, not at the relationship between knee and foot. Does that make sense? Still holding that thing, reach behind you in the bowler, keep this foot in the plane and box of the other foot. How far can you reach over and maintain that shape? So Heidi's got her foot back. I want that foot across. Twist, twist that body. Figure out how to twist that body. Get to the limits of your position and figure out how to take three breaths there. The key to these ankles is making them work at these end ranges and having access to those positions. Come back up, shake it out. Whew, other side. Keeping that heel engaged, figuring out how to breathe. Get to the limits of your shape. Maintain the integrity of your foot. Three breaths, big powerful breaths. Own that position in shape. Wobbles are okay. Don't collapse that arch. You've lost your arch. Good, good, good. Where do we integrate balance drills into warm-ups? There's no time otherwise, right? We've got to get these ankles on, belly tight, prepped, good. Reach out to the side, gorgeous. What's that look like out to the side? How far can you go? I don't hear any breathing. You don't breathe in a position, you cannot own that shape. Arms straight, belly tight. All right, tempo, here's the goal. Put your arches in the best position available to you, your foot in the best shape available to you. Rib cage, in and down and organized. Where are you gonna make the compromise? If you need to, you're gonna bend the elbow. What we wanna do is not put that compromise right into the chest and the trunk, we wanna put it into the elbow and shoulder. So instead of just automatically flaring out, I'm gonna keep the elbows in tight and go ahead and give myself a little bit more leverage. So that will be the limits of my position. Obviously I wanna be here with thumbs back, but if I can't, I'm gonna bend the elbow a little bit. But what I'm not gonna do is banana back, okay? So arms up, limits your best you can. Big breaths in this position. Already you're looking, breathing through the mouth and shallow, show me you can breathe. In fact, let's go nose only here. What I'm looking for is that Sarah tries to maintain the integrity of this relationship between the bottom of her sternum, her xiphoid process, and her pubic bone, and that that relationship, she can brace into that position, but that it doesn't hinge and go to end range, right? So one more time. Holding, she's stiffening into that position. I can tell because her belly is drawn in, and in this bottom shape. How heavy is this ball you're holding? 100 pounds. Woo! Arches up. So look, remember, I have a range where, hey, this is where I'm getting the most bang for my butt, buck in sport. In pedaling, and jumping, and landing, and running. I still can open the foot up and still have a ton of power. As soon as I start getting past 12, 15 degrees, man, it's like people are turning off my hip, hip stability. There's just no way I can manage that. It just becomes weak. So understand that I can turn the feet out a little bit. That may open me up, but I start to lose the 
efficiency of what I'm trying to do, which is what train athletes to jump and land with straight feet straight forward. We are not Olympic lifters. We are training for sport. All right, here's what we're gonna do. From behind the neck, work on first warm-up sets, just some easy pressing from behind the neck. Then let's add just a few push-ups, push presses from behind the neck, a couple sets of 10, whatever, just a bar, one set of 10, sets of seven. Seven is the forgotten number in weightlifting. Eight, what is an eight? Then let's go ahead and push that in without moving the feet. Just dipping and feeling like we own that position and we're not hustling out. We're hitting that bottom shape and that we can feel our feet. We can drop down, be organized, rib cage tight, balance toe to heel, and then let's make it interesting. But the only interest today is that you have to stick in this position for a microsecond before you recover and stand back up. I think we get confused. Is this Olympic lifting? Is this kettlebells? What, what's the point? I'm afraid of going overhead. Ultimately, we're looking at, hey, from a shoulder perspective, can I go from an open chain to closed chain back to open chain position? And my ability to create a stable shoulder as I push and still create stability from the other direction is really what we're getting out of jerking, right? What you'll see is that guys who have missing range of motion will push and can lock out one direction but can't simultaneously go the other direction. And in sport, or grabbing a dynamic object or creating stability off of a dynamic moving system, I need to be able to create stability as I push and push the other direction. So that's one. Number two in this movement kind of paradigm, forget about the shoulder besides having overhead range of motion and having a language between not teaching compensation when the, when the missing overhead position is there, because this is just a weak position athletically, the other thing that we're looking at is, hey, ultimately when I just put something over my head, what am I doing? I'm keeping my torso upright. I'm forcing an upright torso to me. And what that means is I can't hide a lot of the dysfunction and loss of, of positional language and competency from the ankles and the hips. So, so much of sport needs to happen jumping and landing with a much more upright torso. So all we're doing here is, oops, excuse me. All we're doing here is saying, hey, can I keep my torso upright? Can I start to challenge that position a little bit? And then can I arrive there dynamically? But more importantly for our athletes, today we're working on, can I pressurize appropriately under that big load? And secondarily, can I not lose the integrated foot function? Because what ends up happening is we're all excited about the weight going up, but meanwhile, we burn the house down while making toast. So balance between ball of foot and heel, and even at compression, when I dip to drive, that shouldn't change. So this, these movements like push press end up being great skill transfer exercises for athletes being able to learn how to effectively jump more effectively. Little bit of jumping, weight on the bar. You can start to move your feet if you want to. What I'm interested in though, no deviations in the feet, but what I'm really looking at right now is how well can I pressurize? That's the goal. How much air can I get in and be deliberate when I start to put big loads on my back? How can I take a breath? Because if I'm already bent, bent and broken, I'm not gonna be able to create the same intra abdominal pressure. So now we've got prime, we've got feet, we got shoulders, we know what our shapes look like, throw some weight on the bar, put that exaggeration into how much air you can get into pressurize, even though you don't have to be maximally stiff because it's still light. So look, you're, you're one of the big kids, you're one of the super strong kids, right? and you're gonna just power jerk this, that's fine. You know you can hit it. You can't squat down or go ass to ankle from that shape. So for us, a less valid shape. Why? Because it's a shape that doesn't continue to let me absorb. If I miss, kook, and I get stuck here, there's a car accident, something happened. Versus, hey, I miss, I just go down and drop it, right? That's what we're looking for. So understanding that our athletic training shape we're still gonna squat wide, but that shape doesn't transfer into full range of motion. So it's hard to see sometimes because it's happening so fast, but if you're watching your athletes compress and they're shifting forward, that's really a useful tool to create a whole nother set of hips at the ankle, right? We talked about that before. I should be able to stay flat, stay flat, stay flat, press, 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 press from full foot, toes at the end. So don't get, what your athletes would say is, oh, I just come with my toes at my end. I'm like, no, you didn't. You are on your toes the whole jump, right? And we can test this. I can put 600 pounds on your back and we can see how this goes. I guarantee you that is not the strong position.
okay? Make sure that foot pressure is flat. We just did, we did so many warm-up drills about being aware of that foot. Now we're just confusing your brain with what? Upright torso, load, and speed. Remember, the goal of being an athlete is to be fast. Do not out-program your athlete's speed by doing crazy shit, right? Just dumb work sets where we just forget how to be fast and powerful. Let's be fast. Now be quick. Shapes are looking good. Hold that bottom shape. Stand back up and recover. Fantastic. Leave the bars on and grab ourselves a bike and a uh, couple of kettlebells. 30 second piece. Then athlete B, after the hard 30 second piece, is going to jerk that with the, with the kettlebell, light load. Then overhead squat to the depth that's available to you. One of my challenge in here, we're at a sub-maximal low, but suddenly rotational demands are high, even though the kettle's giving me a little extra love. But I'm interested in what? That you can do this while breathing hard. It's a little volume. So what you're gonna do is turn this into a little conditioning. So how would I think about this? I got a bunch of strength athletes. We're just gonna touch those metabolic corners today. A little quick sprint, all out, step off, then this becomes a skill. Boom, jerk, hit your position, stand up, and then take that overhead squat, lower, Jerk, press, push, press, whatever you need to do. Overhead squat to the depth of your position, and we're just gonna rotate back and forth. So I don't know how many you'll get, maybe two, maybe three couplets, doesn't matter. The point is to red line here, challenge skill here. Red line here, challenge skill here. Does that make sense? You're 15 in, turn it, come on, Sarah. Stand up tall each time, own your shapes. I want you dead by 20 seconds. Dead by 20, dead by 20. On your breathing, face soft. What's my shape available to me today, right now? That's what I'm after. That can be a moving target for our athletes. During the season, during injury, 